Hi, I'm Eli from Bernal Cutlery. I'm here with Josh and Kelly, and uh, we are introducing this uh, one-of-a-kind, entirely handcrafted French-style chef's knife uh, based on our travels to Thiers, the legendary knife-making capital of France. So during our travels among the old knife factories of Thiers in France, um, we found quite a number of these uh, original cow bone handle scales. Um, some of which had been pre-shaped a long time ago into the traditional profile. Um, and alongside with these materials, uh, we were able to get a lot of this uh, original steel rivet stock and uh, brass washers called rosettes uh, that are used in this traditional knife handle construction. Uh, so, of course, I was uh, super excited to use these old materials in a new knife. Um, so I forged this 9-inch blade out of 52100 carbon steel. Uh, I gave it a pretty aggressive uh, convex grind and a tapered tang in the French style uh, with some somewhat asymmetrically stamped handheld marks uh, for authenticity's sake um, and was able to... Uh, use the bone handle scales right on the tang with the original rivet stock and the rosettes uh, and it was a pleasure working with these old materials. So the Potsumel is not necessarily the you know high water mark of French knife making it's a, a pretty kind of humble work knife there's a, not a lot of embellishment in them they're just all business and um, it's a type of forging that you'll find kind of all around the world uh, this would be a, a billet of steel forged um, with uh, a tapering uh, blade and a tapering tang. Often the old ones had a uh, welded uh, piece of iron for the tang uh, welded onto the steel for the blade. Um, steel used to be, you know, a lot more expensive um, proportionally. And then also it's a bit easier to drill out the, um, the holes in the, uh, the tang for these... Um, for these rivets. Quite often on, um, on a uh, Platzumel knife, you'll see on the old ones, a taper uh, along the tang, and this was where it was forged out, and then the, um, the tang shaped. And you'll also see a degree of taper in the blade as well, and depending on the kind of work that it was intended for, will you know, reflect how much thickness is in the blade. This is a real heavy one here. This is one that would be for uh, butchers, kind of like a, almost like a lightweight cleaver. It's called an abatra knife, kind of like a yodaba if you're familiar with Japanese knives. But um, this was a really cool project and it was really cool to see this come to life. Uh, I was really, um, really, really pleased to see what, uh, what Eli came up with and um, definitely has his own, uh, you know, kind of his own feel to it as, you know, he's uh He's his own knife maker, but, um, you know, riffing off of this old one, it really caught its spirit, I think. And finding some old materials to work with is always just super cool. So that added another element that was really nice with this one. So after Josh, Eli, and the crew returned from traveling to all these knife making regions in Europe and Japan last year, 2023, I was really curious to see what kind of knife um, Eli could make um, as an inspiration from all of these knife making spaces and places that they went to and visited. And so I was really excited to see how he would respond to France and the knife that he produced is really amazing. It took my breath away. The knife that Eli made gestures heavily to a small new old stock knife that Philippe who is the eighth generation steward of K. Sabatier, gave to me as a gift about 10 years ago. I believe the knife was unused from the later part of the 19th century and has become a very special family knife that is used only for our, our birthday cakes and special gatherings. I hope whoever ends up with Eli's knife will find as much joy as I have in Philippe's gift. Oh, hi. Thanks for watching the video. And uh, this knife will be available Friday, April 12th, 12 p.m., 2024. And stay tuned for more knives inspired by knife history. Thanks for watching.